Hey everyone, so this is a video on the Linksys WRT1900AC wireless router. Um, it's going to look familiar if uh, you're familiar with the um, older WRT54G um, wireless router from Linksys, which I had as, uh, for, and I still have it actually. I don't use it, it's uh, sitting in uh, storage right now, but um, the Linksys. Uh, WRT54G was is kind of was kind of famous for um, how well um, it ran and could be uh, actually modified with uh, custom firmwares um, to uh, to enhance it even further um, and it just had really good reliability. A lot of people have issues with the routers that are out today, even though they are you know marketed as being uh, the fastest, uh, the best. Uh, and 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 uh, you know just the marketing is always saying how great these new wireless router routers are, but I mean I've seen them fail. Um, I had an Asus. Uh, uh, I can't remember the exact model, but it was one of the ones that didn't have the antennas, and it died on me. Um, and in fact, um, I got this one because uh, it's replacing uh, over here. You'll see I have a Netgear. Um, and this is the, at the time, and even right now, still very expensive. Uh, it's the Nighthawk um, R7000, and it's a it's a wireless AC um, router. Um, and I and I don't want to say very bad things about it because it was very fast actually, um, <clears throat> and I had no problems for it for about a year. But then what happened is. Um, I don't believe. I believe it was not r related to um, to a hardware fault necessarily, but just really bad timing um, around my neighborhood here. The uh, power company was doing a bunch of work, and they didn't notify us that they'd be playing with the power, turning it on and off throughout the day. And even though I had this connected to a surge protector, I do believe uh, with them uh, playing with the power. Um, they killed this. Uh, anyway, I didn't have time to uh, figure out or troubleshoot any further on this one. So, uh, in fact, uh, this one I picked up, uh, and I didn't. It's actually I didn't pay for it. The power company did. So, I mean, it's it's I'm I'm not really uh, losing out on anything really here. Um, the Netgear was a AC router, and so is this one. Um, this one actually is a little, it has a little faster processor in it and everything. But in fact, actually, in my speed test that I've done, the WRT1900AC is actually a tiny bit slower in throughput performance versus the Netgear. However, the, the, the Linksys has more range. And, you know, that's, I would say that's probably down to the fact that it has four antennas versus three. Um, so just uh, running, around, uh, running around the uh, box here, uh, the specs here, you can see that uh, there's your speed. It's a dual band, so it's got 2.45 gigahertz uh, bands, beam forming, USB 3.0, four, four gigabit ports, um, there's your dual core, 1.2 gigahertz. Um, it's open source ready, just like the WRT54G was. Um, now, um, I'm running the stock uh, firmware on this. Um, the, apparently, the uh, custom firmware, uh, uh, there's been a lot of delays in getting that uh, working, and it's kind of in release candidate stage right now, so there's no final version of it. I'm not going to really play with that until it's 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 closer to being done. So I'm actually running the the stock firmware, and I actually like the stock firmware. The interface is uh, very simple, very clean. It's a lot better than the Netgear, in my opinion. Um, so I've actually already set this this up, so uh, I don't really ha there's nothing in the box, but I can kind of show you how it was packed. And I mean, even the packaging was was very good. Like, you know, you have the foam, and this is. The soft foam right here, like it's it's packaged very well. Um, you have a little manual here, and then that's where your your antennas were. So I mean, it was packaged very well. Um, 
but you know uh, this is the kind of packaging that I expect uh, when you're paying like over $250 for a uh, wireless router um, so in that sense I I, I I like the packaging looks nice um, doesn't feel cheap so here we have the router turned on um, and we can see the front LED indicator lights so there's your power your internet 2.4 gigahertz 5 gigahertz and you have an eSATA a USB 1 and a USB 2 uh, it should be noted that like those are actually two separate um, so that it's not actually a USB 1 port it's it's USB uh, 3 um, and then we have the Gigaport active LED uh, so we have I'm only I only have it hooked up to one device right now so that's the first gigabit uh, port right there um, and as you can see it, it there's it goes up to four so um, you know it's quite simple the LEDs uh, don't really uh, stick out too badly I know some people don't like uh, LEDs sometimes I mean with the Netgear the LED intensity was was um, brighter than these ones um, but uh, you can actually turn turn them off if you don't like them and you could do that on the Netgear as well so that's always handy um, so as you can see we have uh, over here we have the antenna the antennas hooked up too so you can see there's one right here there's one in the back we have one at the back there and then there's one over the side here so there's four um, I have it uh, uh, the configuration set up for uh, multi-level uh, house because uh, uh, they actually give you a f uh, in the manual a few recommendations depending on the size and type of uh, re residence that you're in. So, um, and in fact, doing the uh, antennas this way did improve my signal. Um, in some spots where I was about 96% uh, uh, signal range, it actually went up to 100% once I switched the antennas around. Um, so, just doing the straight up uh, antenna antenna configuration uh, in my situation uh, didn't actually give me the best range. So here we have the top view of the uh, Linksys and what I really like about this and how I think it stands out a lot from other um, uh, routers that are, that are out there is that this thing is built very well um, both on the outside and in the inside. Um, from the outside you can see there's lots of ventilation at the top. There's ventilation at the bottom as well. The, the router actually sits on uh, some feet that rot, let, you know lifts it up a little bit um, so air can get in from the top and then any of the heat that uh, you know builds up uh, will come at the top um, as heat rises. Um, so and if you actually look at some of the other reviews out there um, they've actually opened up the the encasing and it reveals a very huge, um, the biggest that I've seen personally, heat sink system in here, configuration, whatever you want to call it. The other thing that you might not see here, and I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit more, is it's hard to really tell, but right there, right there where that circle is, um, is actually a little small fan. So this fan will turn on automatically when the firmware, however it's configured, uh, we don't know uh, what the temperature um, setting is for this thing to turn on, but uh, once it reaches a certain temperature, uh, the fan will turn on and it will help to exhaust uh, even more uh, hot air um, out the top. So I've never seen uh, a fan in a wireless router before, but I think it's something that uh, more should do. And here we have the overview uh, page after you've logged in that gives you uh, some boxes here with, you know, general information about your, your network. So then you have over here, you have your different areas that you can access. Um, so we'll go uh, through those a little bit here. So this is the media priority screen. Again, if you were using this, you could... Um, uh, I'm assuming if I were to turn it on it would then see all the active devices that I've had before and then allow me to drag and drop about you know which ones to prioritize over the others so um, yeah um, I mean I think if you have a lot of devices 
then this could be very um, useful. I think if you are a, a if you have a network that doesn't have a lot of devices, then it might you might not see much benefit to this. But <clears throat> um, yeah, it's going to depend on very much on your particular situation. And we have a speed test uh, section, which is um, nice to have that built in, um, so you can uh, you know potentially troubleshoot. Um, you know, quickly, uh, your internet speeds. Um, though I found that this is not, um, and it might be a firmware issue, I'm not sure, but it's not 100% accurate. Um, you know, you can see it's powered by, um, I've never known how to exactly say that, Ukula, uh, which is, you know, speedtest.net, uh, I believe, you know, is the popular website. It's, so it's, even though it's using the same I think the problem why it's not reliable is it doesn't seem to be detecting my location properly. So the servers that it's connecting me to are further away from me. So my speed is not um, uh, as rated as what I'm paying for. Uh, whereas if I go to speedtest.net, um, it properly detects my location and gives me, in fact, the sp speeds either at my rated speed or even above. So. Um, Seems to be, yeah, uh, an issue right now with the firmware with, with this uh, part of it, though. So don't, uh, don't um, uh, trust this 100%. So here we have the um, external storage uh, screen. And so this is where you would, uh, you know, see all of your um, storage devices that you've connected to the router. So be it hard drives or um, et cetera. Um, it has a media server option and FTP server option, which is, you know, handy, I guess, if you're, if you're, if you need that. So here we have under the connectivity uh, area, the, the spot where you could um, check for an update uh, with the firmware. I'm using the most recent firmware on this device. Um, it came with, I believe, 1.18. Um, and the latest version is 1.110. Um, you can choose to let the router update itself. Um, I personally don't like things updating themselves. Uh, I prefer to have that control over it. So under the wireless settings, this is what we have. And I feel that this is um, going to be what most people would will want to have it set to. Um, but it will depend on the devices that you have on your network. Um, but a few things I want to point out here is that um, on the 5 gigahertz band, if you want to have um, AC speed and the 80 megahertz channel width, you must have the network mode set to mixed and the channel width to auto. Uh, you cannot with this router, at least not right now, you cannot dedicate the 5 gigahertz band only to AC devices. We can see that here's your choices. You have AN only, N and A. Um, now one would say, well, you know, why don't I just, you know, you could set it to A and N, which A would mean AC as well. Um, but what you'll notice is that over in the channel width is there's no option for 80 megahertz when we know that, you know, that is something AC and, and everything is capable of. So why they've done this, I'm not sure. Um, but from the documentation that I've read, um, if you want to, ha if you want to be able to have your AC devices, uh, use that, the 80 megahertz channel width. Um, you have to leave it on auto and network mode has to be set to mixed. You know, I don't have any G devices or B, B devices. Um, so I've, I've specified my network mode to only allow N devices. Um, and the reason that is, is that if you do, uh, turn the network mode on to allow for more, uh, devices, you are going to lower your uh, speeds, essentially, um, because it has to uh, account for everything else. Um, 
the the actual channels, um, I let the router decide what to pick, depending on the device. Um, I, I Netgear, I did the same thing. It seems to always do that very well. Um, I think they've they've the firmwares are good enough now that they're they're able to, and the routers themselves are good enough to fi to find the best channel, depending on the situation. Um, so. I just leave the channels on auto, but I mean, you can you can play with it if you want. You could, you know, with uh, five gigahertz, there's all your your choices, um, and then with uh, two point four gigahertz, there's all your options. So, um, yeah. So I mean, keep in mind that if you go higher, um, you will get better range, but you won't your speeds will go down. The interesting thing about this um, router for me and. I'm actually surprised it doesn't bother me more. Um, the out-of-the-box firmware that comes from Linksys, it is very limited in the advanced functionality that you can do. For example, uh, we saw in the box that this thing supports beamforming, um, but you can't play with it. You can't turn it on and off, for example, whereas on the Netgear, I could actually turn it on and off, and there was things like an option for, on the Netgear, airtime fairness and all that kind of stuff. You know. Even though the WRT uh, supports all these things, they don't let you play with it. Um, so it's it's built around really making it simple for someone just to buy it, turn it on, and get really great performance and and range and reliability and everything. And I'm actually surprised that I haven't had to play with this thing. And I, I I'm surprised that the the firmware out of the box I don't seem to mind because I'm getting like I said the speed difference between the Netgear and this I mean it makes up for it in range this 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 router has much better range than the Nighthawk did um, but the you know the actual speed um, for my download and uploads, you know, there are my, if I if I were to actually show you a comparison spreadsheet or something, they would show that the WRT is slightly slower. But it doesn't really bother me because I I I really I really have a good feeling about this router and that I'm going to get a lot of use out of it, a lot of time out of it. I'm not going to have to upgrade for a long time. I yeah, and with the with the option of the custom firmware coming, where if I want to, if I want to get all those advanced tweaking options that you know, um, that you're used to getting, um, then I just have to download that open source, uh, you know, firmware, uh, once it's ready. Um, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say check out this router if you're in the market for, you know, especially if you're upgrading from like a G or a, or an N and you want to move to AC. Um, there's still not a lot of devices out there that support AC, but they're, they're, they're more and more. Um, so, I mean, I think now is, is definitely a good time to upgrade. Um, now, this, the, the, one, the one thing that's really a big downside for this router is it's very expensive, and I think, it's, I think they've overpriced this router, um, in my opinion, because there are other AC routers from like Netgear and, and Asus that people are going to look at the price difference and go, well, I can get an AC router for in some cases, like fifty to a hundred dollars less than what they want from this one. So that's something to you know. Price definitely does play a big part in I think you know what people decide to to invest in. So, but I have to say I had one Asus router fail on me, and I had a Netgear go on me. Now I don't think it was necessarily in my situation Netgear's fault. Um, I do think it was again what I was saying earlier about the, sh the shorting out with the power company but um, I don't know uh, like they all they all have their fair share of you know reports of failures like you look at a review of a lot of these AC routers out there or even not non AC routers you're gonna find you won't find one single uh, product that has you know perfect score you know someone's there's always gonna be problems now the one, uh, one thing I do want to point out and I, I kind of forgot until now is that this one this 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 uh, WRT 1900 AC actually has a version two, so the one that I have is version one. There is a hardware revert revision they call them. Normally this happens 
after the rudder's been out for a while, and this one's been out for a year, so I mean, that's, you know, I would say that's fairly normal, um, and a lot of companies do this. So there's actually two versions out there right now that you can buy of this router. Now the only way you'll be able to tell a difference is on the box. Basically, the new uh, WRT1900AC comes with a um, dual core 1.3 gigahertz processor. The hardware version one that I have is a 1.2 gigahertz processor. So the newer hardware revision is slightly faster in the megahertz department um, and it, it uses lower power. I think uh, if I was reading correctly they uh, re managed to reduce the power um, usage on it so um, in fact the new uh, hardware 2.0 does not have the fan to help exhaust heat if it has to. So because they were able to reduce the power usage I guess the temperatures were were able to be reduced just with the passive heat sink that that is in there and like I said the passive heat sink that is in there is really well done I mean if you should really go in and read like a, an article that opens up the the box and see it uh, it's 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 massive so other than that there's not much difference between the um, the hardware revisions so whether you get version one version two it doesn't really matter I think it's gonna be great no matter what um, but just something I wanted to point out. Um, another thing is you you know you can't be you can't be sure you're gonna get uh, one either. For example, if you buy it online, like you know most of the time they don't specify which version it is, so you get what you get, especially. But at least if you buy it in store, you can actually see in the box, you know, by that gigahertz uh, uh, reading uh, what the um, what the version is that you're getting. So keep that in mind. But I would definitely recommend it. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out actually is that, sorry here, um, Linksys does have um, high gain antennas available. So if you want to replace the existing uh, stock uh, antennas that are there, uh, you can buy a pack that are high gain. So that means they're going to be, uh, first off, they'll be bigger, longer, um, and they are going to potentially give you a boost in your signal range if you need it. I think they're like a hundred bucks, so they're fairly expensive. I mean, you can buy a, you can buy a, a, a like a cheaper router for that. So I mean, don't go running out and buying these high gain antennas unless you find that you you really need them. Um, I haven't had any problems with the stock ones, so I'm going to keep these. Um, but I wanted to point that out as well. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, check this router out. Um, and uh, you know, if anyone else has any you know questions or if they have comments, if you own this router, you want to share your opinion with it, uh, let us know.